Hi everyone, I'm Alexander Fernandez and welcome to episode 2 of Coffee with the CEO. Today we have a special guest, Sapna Sudakaran, head of production for All Pixels uh, by Streamline Studios. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. You wrote a fantastic article about project management in video games, yeah. and I think that's an amazing subject because rarely in games do we actually talk about things outside of engineering and art yeah. or game design. But you hit one of the most fundamental pieces of how you make a video game, and that's really the project manager yeah. and basically bringing all that together. What made you write that article? Why, why did you do it? Well, I think I was really curious because project managers do pretty much everything in terms of like on the ground. We communicate with people, we coordinate between the different teams. So I, like one of the main things that I also noticed is that 90% of us are not from the industry. Yeah. We learn on the job. So I was curious to know, you know, as we go through the motions, the daily our daily lives pretty much. I was curious to know what are the values that we learned that could be applied across all the other industries as well, not just video games. That's interesting. Yeah. So let me ask you, why do you think that most of the people in project management video games don't come from video games? I think, yeah, I think that's very interesting. Um, I, Well, they all of us wanted to come in because we wanted to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, like we wanted to make games but in a way we also had needed to have a different kind of mindset mm -hmm. you know wanting to learn kind of picking up the pieces so it wasn't really necessarily needing to have the background in games but it was more of you know the type of people that streamline kind of attracted is these types of people who want to be digging deep and that is regardless of background okay so, so let me ask you uh do you, would you say that most of the project managers that you've worked with in video games, are they highly technical, highly creative people? Or what is their background? Like, if they're not from the industry, what is it that that makes them a project manager? I guess, what, what are the attributes they have? So none of them are re truly technical or creative. Like, none of us come from that kind of background. So I think when we sit down and interview these guys, it's more of you know, their, their mindset and their thought process. You know, we always tell them, you know, be ready for the craziness, for the, for just unpredictability. And the fact that they come here, we have six months where we see whether they can do it or not. And if they, they're able to do it within that period of time, then indeed they could take on anything. So when you say get ready for the craziness, what it sounds like is that you're talking about uh, this concept of VUCA. Yeah. So volatile, uncertain, complex, and in, Amb ambiguity. Ambiguity, yeah. So, would you say that's what you mean when you when you're talking about? It? I oh, mean, is it yeah. is it pretty? Is video game production really about? <laughs> like, help me understand that. Yeah, as a project manager, yeah. like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so volatile. Every day is something that you cannot predict. I mean, my personal value is like is, in, in terms of project management, <laughs> my personal take on this is data driven, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's only so much that you can use data in terms of managing your projects because you can't predict someone getting sick or you know like a, a, an issue with the engine or something like that like it's it's really hard so being able to stay grounded and handle all these random things being thrown at you at the same time uh, making sure that we hit our milestones because at the end that's how we eat yeah you know so we we just every day is just very ambiguous okay so help me understand this so I'm someone who's in the audience right now, yeah. and I'm like, God, you know, I'm not a programmer, I'm not an artist. Yeah. I think I could be a project manager. Yeah. What are the things, like say three things that I should be aware of from the outset, yeah. and what can I do in order to basically get prepared for being a project manager, manager in video games? Yeah, so three things I would say is, I always say this, wanting to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy to it's easy to say like, hey, I, I always want to learn, I always want to 
learn new things. But when you actually come into video games, it's not as easy as that because there's a bunch of... I mean, firstly, technology constantly moves. It, yeah. it, keeps, it keeps changing. So it's not something that you can... You have to keep running and catching up with technology, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second thing is just going past the, the fear or anxiety of not knowing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because again, it's so ambiguous, it's so volatile mm -hmm. that we'll have to kind of you know, always have that um, wanting to go past it and always like know, know that your team is with you. you know, yeah. we, we are we're together, although we, we handle our own projects, but everyone has their own skill sets and their own experiences. So we kind of know that everyone has each other's back and okay. that's, that's really important. Um, yeah. And the third one, I would say just uh, always cover your bases. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even if you not in or from the industry like that's the easiest thing you can do like document what the meetings that you have you know yeah. um keep video recordings of your client calls even if you're not the, the main person talking to the clients if you're just sitting in the meeting observing it like you're the guy or the girl who who make sure that you know everything is saved and documented and you know later on we can just pull it out you know those kinds of things are really simple but will save us in the long run. Okay, so those are yeah. personal attributes. So yeah. what do I need to know that's industry specific? So I understand I need to always be learning. Yeah. I need to understand that I need to go further. Yeah. I need to go past say limitations. Yeah. And basically I need to have other people's back. I need to be a good good, good colleague, good team worker, good team player, yeah. right? What are the what are the things I need to know industry specific that would help me be successful as a project manager? Well, this one is a little bit interesting because Project managers don't necessarily need to know everything there is to know about the industry. Yeah. But what we do need to be, what we need to do is being able to rely on our art leads um, and our artists mm -hmm. amalgamate the information and then, you know, do our jobs well. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing that we've learned. So basically then, that sounds like you need to learn, you need to have trust with your... Yeah let's say the people who actually have the hard skills. Yeah. So, cause basically like that moment in time, like if, if I'm hearing you out, you're basically telling me that you need to be able to build a good relationship with the people that have the hard skills yes. in production, whether that's an engineer, an artist or a designer, understand what they're saying and then translate what they're saying into the impact it has on the schedule, that's right. on a customer or just overall. Yeah, that's right. Is that is that, is that about that, right? Yeah, that's that's. How right. do you do that? Because I mean, I'm, I mean, I I work in games too, and and well, I mean, let's just say communication ain't the strong suit of a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, how how do you do that? Because it sounds like these are very rare unicorn style people that can understand these very gifted, very mm. extremely creative and technical people, yeah. designing people. And can take that communication and then encapsulate it yeah. for everyday consumption to, let's say, call it the layman yeah. or the everyday folk. Yeah. How? I think it's what I call the thoughtfulness okay. thing. Yeah, so yeah, so, talk, talk about that. What do you yeah, mean? Okay, so, yeah, tell me about that. So I know it's it's not just about being thoughtful of other people. It's it's really thinking about everything, you know, like it's easy to miss out even the tiny details, yeah. but... Uh, as we go through the motions of the day, to, like day to day project management, it's really being able to, yeah, just think of the overall picture. Put as we get information, we yeah. put ourselves in other people's shoes, and try to and think about. Okay, I'll, I'll say it this way: like if I get information from you, I'll put myself in the other person's shoes and say, would this guy be able to understand what you're saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Being able to translate that and, and put it out there to someone else is really important. And uh, yeah. how do you do that? Because like, I mean, I, mean, I know this, yes. is, this is a pressing thing it, because it like is, is. you, you've just described something that is really hard. So I'm like, again, I'm in the audience. I'm like, you know, I'm some 18 year old kid, 20 year old kids. So it's like, oh my God, I, I want to do that. But how, how do I get to the point where I realize Okay, I'm not going to ask you how to explain how, how do I become a human being. Yeah. But, I mean, how do, how do I basically, 
how did you get to that? Let me ask you for your own personal journey, actually, because yeah. this is probably the best way. Yeah. When you started here, mm. how much of what you just said did you know how to do versus how much you had to learn and, and how did you learn to do it? Well, I'm going to have to be honest. Well, yeah. Please, um, no, please lie to the audience. No. <laughs> yeah, just lie to them. It's, it's what we do on the show. Oh, no. <laughs> please tell them the truth. Go ahead. Yeah. So I thought I had a pretty okay amount of communication skills <laughs> until I actually stepped into the project management shoes. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because then you realize like, okay, wait a minute. Like, there's a lot of things that we miss out. Like I said, yeah. when it comes to dealing with the different units mm -hmm. of our daily lives. So I had to learn I had to learn it across a period of like a few months to a year pretty much. And the way I learned it is through observing like the my GM, Yaji, the yeah. way she the way she handles things, you know, the, even the smallest things like a change in schedule. You know, even okay, so even a change in schedule you'd have to think about who it would affect. You know, like a, a simple day uh, extension of a schedule. Mm -hmm. Like you think about, okay, firstly, I need to tell the artist that, oh, the entire deadline is pushed. The lead, of course, because he owns the entire project. Yeah. Like he needs, he needs to have the oversight. Then um, the project manager of the next project this artist is going to go on to, um, you know, that's going to affect his start mm -hmm. date on that project and how that's going to affect that milestone as well. Um, you know, it, it's, wow. it's like, you know, the, the ball keeps rolling. I mean, you just described basically being able to understand the positions of three very different people in space, time and outcome. Yeah. So hearing what you're saying, what it sounds like is a tremendous amount of anticipation. Yes. So you have to be able to anticipate. Yes. You have to understand the result. It, so it's a lot of empathy because if I'm thinking and I'm hearing what you're saying, it's like, you, you're basically taking a lot of different data. Yeah. Constantly processing data and assessing how that data has impact on what the original plan was yeah. and then making decisions based on the changes that are happening or what you see needs to happen in order to accommodate yeah. for circumstances. That's right. And telling the right people, I think that's the most important. That's no, see, that's okay. So... Now, here's the thing. So, we're in games and understanding who the right people are, yeah. understanding that material outcome. How do you keep track of all this? I mean, honestly, yeah. what? Do, how, like, you got, like, a notebook and a piece of paper? <laughs> like, is that? Yeah, we're, oh, we're really, pretty, we're pretty <laughs> an analogous people, you know? Yeah. Like, all we need is a notebook and pencil. We don't use, you know, Trello or, you know, all those softwares. I mean, we do have StreamFrame that handles all our our tasking and everything but our own personal um, tasks are pretty much like we we keep ourselves in check and we also keep each other in check I think that's that's one of the, the key as well because yeah. like in, in our team we have Yaji we have Shafiq we have the intern Alex um, and myself like we constantly remind each other hey, have you done this have you done that um, because we know at the end of the day that that's going to affect everything in, in our uh, do you team. have to be super organized I mean, because it sounds, I mean, you just told me to keep each other in check. And it sounds like, I mean, you sound pretty organized. Um, yes, somewhat. Because I, I don't want, I don't want to discourage people who are naturally, you know, chaotic. I would say chaotic. Because in a way, it's good. You know, you, you I would say like, I'm, I'm not the most organized person, but some people do thrive in chaos. You know. Well, okay, so let me, okay, let's put, okay, I'm glad you say that because you may not describe yourself as being organized, but from the outside looking <laughs> in, <laughs> I mean, if you're not organized, then I must be a total burning <laughs> trash can because I don't understand. It's like you're, you're running multi-million dollar projects and doing it like as though you're just blow drying your hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like no big deal, right? It's like, it ain't no thing. And I know a lot of people can't even tie their shoes. You know, so that that's what I'm trying to understand. So I, I get I get what you mean. You don't want to discourage people, but maybe if I hear you, it's the fact that you have to be comfortable with chaos. Yeah. But you have to be able to organize it at the same time. Yeah. So just having a feel of the project is enough. You know, like as long as you know, okay. Rule of thumb: you write things down. You mm -hmm. know, you make sure like you, you you every day you look at your schedules. 
see what's due at, on this date. You know, yeah. Simple things like that. But as long as you have a feel for the project, like you know, okay, on on the big picture, like you know, these guys are working on the high poly, you know, that uh, the low poly is due next, then you kind of keep yourself in check as well. Like, okay, maybe it's time for me to check up on them and see how it's going. So yeah, you, you, you'll have to be somewhat, you have to learn somewhat how to be organized, just write things down. You know, it's as simple... It's as simple as that. You okay, know? so I like how you say you have to feel the project. So projects have a feeling. Yeah, yeah they, yes. Because <laughs> you're dealing with people. <laughs> you, you're deal, you're, really, you're dealing with people. I mean, uh-huh. I've, mm. I've put in, I put in a lot of like Excel sheets and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like I said, a lot of like data-driven processes right. in, in, in how we do things. Because um, I like to see data when it comes to it's not it's not perfect you know i can't really i haven't really perfected how to um look at efficiency of people and all that like that would be great but at the end of the day when you're dealing with people it's more of like you really have to tune into the feelings of everyone on a day-to-day basis and that's really something that you learn across experience like through experience yeah. you know so when when someone is like sitting there, you you kind of observe them. You can be the most introverted person. You don't have to go around talking to people every day, you know. Because we are a bunch of introver- introverted people, right? So, are you introverted? I think I am. I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, just observing someone and like you know understanding like oh wait a minute today they're they're kind of different from from usual, or um, just you know talking to your leads and like. Uh, oh wait a minute there's something not right or even the even the clients like when when you see the way they type it's if it's a little bit different then you kind of have this immediate sense of like oh something is not not right and the thing is the key here is also it doesn't matter if you don't know what it is you know you always have people to talk through these things and then they would help you kind of figure it out like what exactly is the problem you know it's i i Hearing you talk about project management, it seems less about spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> more about people. More about people, yeah, yeah. Uh, more about communication. Yes. Um, and basically just understanding overall that mood, right? Yes. So I'm in the audience now, yeah. and I'm like, okay, I can communicate. I'm decently, I, I've got an organizer. Yeah. I can write. Yeah. <laughs> I'm literate. <laughs> um, how, how, do I, how do I get in? I mean, what do, how do I get in? Oh, just, I think you all you need to do is just apply and show interest in, in us, in, in yeah. the company. I think that's that's the most important thing. Like when you apl- when someone would apply, you know, don't just send in portfolios, just relate it to what we're doing and what we aim to achieve. I think all the stuff that we're doing online would kind of show people, um, you know, our, like who we are as people. You know, you do your videos, we have our blog posts, our, yeah. you know, bake and switch pushes online. Um, you know, just our personality is out there. And as long as people under- see it and understand it and connect with us, I think that's that's pretty much enough. And then later on, in terms of project management, as long as you show a willingness to want to, again, learn and go through the motions with us, know that everyone has each other's back. Do you think it's hard to master project management? Yes. I think in a way it it's going to take a while for people to kind of get used to get used to it. I think Sim- it's as simple as that. Like myself, um you have, you know, my team members. I think it took us probably about a year and like to actually get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit abstract, but, you know, project management, again, despite, like what you said, despite it just, you know, it's not just spreadsheets. That's 60 to 70% would be feelings and moods and, and all that. So, uh, you know, how, how clients react to us, you know, those kinds of things. So what I've noticed is that really there's, there's, there will always be like this, this switch that turns on. You know, as as soon as we reach that, mm. past that struggle period, yeah. you know, it'd be really uncomfortable for sure. At, at one point, like we'll we'll go up this trajectory, and then we'll kind of 
plateau a little bit when we're comfortable like yeah you know i think i think we got it <laughs> i think we're in this 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 zone now and then again something else like there's there's another learning curve because we're, we're moving upwards so last thought what do you think makes a great project manager in video games so again i'm just gonna con like sure you know uh, bring together everything I've said so far. Mm -hmm. I think it's mainly the willingness to learn. That's that's I'm gonna keep saying that. Mm. <laughs> just, wow. Just yeah. want just want to learn. Like you know, don't be afraid of change and discomfort. You know, don't be afraid of the the craziness that will come in video games. You know, whether or not you're you know everything there is to know about video games and the industry. Like as long as you care about the people that you're working with, um, you care about how everything connects with with each other, and just yeah, just trust your team, trust every like your team. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No, <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. Well, I mean, thanks for your time. Thanks thank for joining you. us, and thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this. If you like what you have heard or seen or watched, please subscribe. Click the notify button, which is below us right now, and uh, keep on for the next episode. If there's a specific topic you'd like to see us address, please go ahead and add there down on the uh, communication thing down there, the comment section, and we'll get to you from there. Thanks. Thanks.